So now let's talk about retinal processing. It turns out that the retina is a little bit unique among the other sensory systems or sensory structures in that there is quite a bit of processing that goes on in the retina before it ever gets to the brain. So for one thing, there are the center surround receptive fields in the retina. So first of all, what is a receptive field? It's pretty straightforward. It just refers to the surface of the sensory structure that a given cell responds to. So the receptive field for a photoreceptor is pretty simple. It's just the area of the cell itself. So if we're talking about this photoreceptor right here, this rod, its field of view, its receptive field, just corresponds to this surface area of the cell itself. But if you're talking about the receptive field of a cell that gets input from one of these photoreceptors, like say this bipolar cell, its receptive field corresponds to all of the cells that it gets input from. So this bipolar cell gets input from, at least direct input, from all of these photoreceptors right here. Now, of course, this is a patch of retina in cross-section, so really this would be a circle. But all of these cells represent the receptive field of this bipolar cell. So in other words, light anywhere in this region will have an effect on this bipolar cell. But it turns out that because of horizontal cells or connections between uh, bipolar cells, the actual receptive field of a bipolar cell is a little more complicated. So horizontal cells get their input from photoreceptors too, and then they send their output to bipolar cells. What that means is that the bipolar cell has sort of two receptive fields, one in which it gets direct input from photoreceptors, which is called the center of the receptive field, and then its its other receptive field is the cells that communicate with the bipolar cell indirectly through this horizontal cell. So we call this the surround for that bipolar cell. So this is the center, this is the surround. And it turns out that the effect of light in the center versus the surround depends on how they're connected to the bipolar cells. So there are basically two types of center surround receptor fields. On center cells are, are bipolar cells that are activated by light in the center. So remember, light causes photoreceptors to be hyperpolarized. So if you're talking about an on center cell, Light hits the photoreceptor, hyperpolarizes it, and then it depolarizes the bipolar cell. So in, in an on-center cell, the bipolar cell is activated by light in the center. And then, uh, the, so the, the reason for that means is that it actually has the opposite of the normal response to glutamate. So we said in the past that glutamate is normally an excitatory neurotransmitter and these bipolar cells release glutamate but remember in the in the presence of light they actually re release less glutamate and they release more glutamate in the dark so the fact that these bipolar cells are depolarized when light is present meaning there's less glutamate means that they must be inhibited or hyperpolarized by glutamate which makes them kind of unusual and that means that um, uh, the fact that they're depolarized uh, by, if they're hyperpolarized by the presence of glutamate, they are depolarized by the absence of glutamate. So that means they are, uh, and depolarization we already know, causes action potentials. So these cells are excited whenever light hits the, the center of their receptive field. Um, an off-center cell will have the opposite uh, response. So an off-center cell, would be a different type of bipolar cell that responds to light in the center by actually becoming hyperpolarized. So that means, I'm sorry, uh, that means they are depolarized by glutamate. So if this right here was an off-center cell and light hit the center, that would reduce the amount of glutamate which would hyperpolarize this cell, again, if it were off-center. Um, so basically on-center cells are excited by light in the center of their receptive field and inhibited by light in, uh, whereas off-center cells are inhibited by light in the center. Um, now, all on-center or all center surround receptive fields also have a surround. That's where the name comes from. So the surround refers to those cells that surround the center that are connected indirectly to the bipolar cell through these horizontal cells. 
and the surround stimulus um, is transmitted by those horizontal cells. So again, light hits the surround and and hyperpolarizes the photoreceptor. That signal is going to get transmitted to the bipolar cell through a horizontal cell. And it turns out that in all cells that have a center surround receptive field, the effect of light in the center is always the opposite of the effect of light in the surround. So an on-center cell would be stimulated by light in the center and inhibited by light in the surround. An off-center cell would be inhibited by light in the center and stimulated by light in the surround. So if you look at a patch of retina, this just this circle represents a, a given area of, rent, of the retina. This inner circle is the center. The outer area is outer circle is the surround. And let's say there's a bipolar cell or a ganglion cell. Ganglion cells have the same input uh, to our same activity patterns. If we were to record the electrical activity from that ganglion cell, we would see that it has sort of a baseline activity level until we apply light in the surround and dark, I mean, I'm sorry, when we apply light in the center and dark in the surround. So if this is an on-center cell, we would expect this cell, the retinal ganglion cell we're recording from, to just go crazy because now we're exciting the center and inhibiting the, the or preventing inhibi inhibition from the surround. Um, whereas if this cell was completely bathed in dark, so the, the black areas represent dark, white areas represent light, if the entire thing was bathed in darkness, you would get sort of an intermediate response because you're failing to activate the center, but you are not inhibiting through the surround. So this down here represents complete darkness. This up here would represent complete uh, illumination. So only this pattern where you see light in the center and dark in the surround would give you the maximum activation of this on-center cell. An off-center cell would have the opposite effect. So again, uh, complete illumination or complete darkness would give you the same response. Its preferred stimulus would be basically a donut, a ring of light surrounding the center, but then basically darkness in the center itself. So this is the activity pattern of an off-center cell. This is the activity pattern of an on-center cell. Now you might wonder, why do we have these center surround receptive fields? Um, and it turns out the main reason for having these is to help detect light dark edges. So if you have, again, this is a patch of retina. Uh, here's the center, here's the surround. So let's say this is an on-center cell. If part of this, if the part of the area is illuminated, but part is dark, then uh, that means that the area that's dark will be uh, essentially um, uh, activated or uh, not inhibited because this is on center, um, but the part in um, and actually, I apologize. This is actually a off center cell. I'll just fix that. So this is an off center cell. So an off-center cell, it again, is inhibited by light in the center and uh, stimulated by light in the surround. But in this case, the light from the center is inhibiting the cell, and the lack of total illumination of the surround means that it doesn't is not effect to, not enough to counteract that effect. Whereas down here, the most of the uh, area is in darkness, including the center, and only some of the surround is. Uh, lit up, but that's enough to activate it. So this light dark edge passing over the center is the optimal uh, pattern, uh, optimal sensory stimulus for this type of cell. Um, and then of course the opposite would, would be true of an on-center cell. If this were an on-center cell, you would see the opposite activity pattern. This uh, stimulus would stimulate, activate it, it would, we'd see more action potentials here, and this stimulus would inhibit it. Um, now, the reason for having these center surround receptive fields and, and being able to detect light dark edges is it's really important for detecting contrast because, again, just like we said uh, before, your 
brain is not a computer, your eyes are not a camera. Um, they just make approximations of what they're looking at. And they have to be able to deal with the fact that light levels are changing all the time. So the amount of light coming off of a surface is uh, dependent on the light in the room and the color. So your brain has to be able to maintain the, the scene it's looking at even when the light levels change. So those center surround receptive fields are helpful for that. So for example, if I asked you to look at these two inner squares here, um, now if you look at them, you, uh, and I asked you which one is darker, is the upper uh, square darker or the lower one? So do you think this square is uh, a different shade of gray than this square? Now you may have seen this illusion before, it also kind of depends on what monitor you're looking at this with. Um, but most people would say that this square down here is darker than this square. But in fact, they're exactly the same shade of gray. Um, and the reason they look different is because the edges of those squares are hitting some center surround receptive fields. And so if they're on center cells, the edge of this uh, square, when it hits your uh, some of the center surround receptive fields in your retina, are going to be activated because the, the center is lighter than the surround, meaning that the surround including this region out here. So you have, of course, are an array of these that just happen to form a square on the retina, and so that's what you're seeing. Whereas down here, the center is actually darker than the surround, and so you'll actually get less activation from these cells. So your brain will interpret this as a darker square than this, even though they're exactly the same shade of gray. Here's an even stronger um, example of that. This, uh, this is a picture of you know, a cylinder kind of sitting on top of a checkerboard. Um, and if I asked you to tell me um, which is darker, this square right here or this square right here, um, most people would say that this square is lighter and this square is darker. Uh, they are, in fact, exactly the same shade. So uh, I can prove it if I switch to my uh, pen here. Actually, I'm going to switch. Windows 2 to make it easier to see. So if I over here and use my pen. I can, I shall use a dark color. So um, if I come over here and just kind of try to block off that color and that one. you can maybe see because I'm kind of taking away some of that uh, extra information. Now you can maybe see that this color right here is the same as this color right here. In fact, I can try this. Let's do this. Maybe easier if they're right next to each other. So again, this shade of gray is exactly the same as this. Again, if you don't believe me, you're welcome to uh, uh, download this image and look at it on your own screen. Okay, next time we will talk about the different types of retinal ganglion cells.